What is going on, Oops. everybody? Weedles from Needle here, and we're back again with an Alter Sun and Alter Moon Wi Fi battle, and this one's going to be a PU Wi Fi battle against Jared. Now, today, I'm using a pretty threatening PU team Firewater, Grass Squirt, and Nagmortar, Lorantis, and Lantern. Also, using Kecleon for a nice priority backbone and Stealth Rocks. Weakness Policy, Morshana for obvious reasons, and a little incursion to taunt other mods, and Parting Shot for keeping momentum going. As my opponent's team oh, is also very threatening, you know, Pyvor, Jinx, and Gurd are massive threats. Gun tank just annoying to deal with. A soft vessel electros is also pretty annoying and Palace Sand is also pretty frustrating. So we have a nice high level PU battle for you guys yes. today. So if you are looking forward to a competitive PU battle, hopefully you guys enjoy this Wi-Fi battle. I recommend you guys watch it till the end. So I'm gonna decide to lead off with my Alolan Persian as my opponent leads off with the Fortnite, the shiny Palace Sand. So pretty cool nickname for the Palace Sand because it is like, you know, a sand castle and Fortnite. It's like black. So it has like the night part. It's kind of cool. I'm gonna go for the top just to prevent stealth rocks even if my opponent predicts it i just want to be safe don't want stealth rocks going on my side of the field because of course i have no hazard control so i'm gonna go for the toxic immediately because i want to weaken this palace and because my team struggles to really hit it outside of lantern and lorantis i just want to toxic pretty much anything in case my opponent wants to switch out i'm gonna go for toxic because my opponent's gonna choose to chip me down with the earth power pretty solid play because you know weakens the lone persian i want to be sure i stay in the range where i can live a mock punch from girder because i need to stay healthy enough to do that so i can you know, go for parting shot and go from there I'm gonna go for parting shot now because i have no reason not to if my opponent chooses to switch out i get some offense some momentum and if he stays in i can pivot into earth power much easier so i'm gonna go for parting shot and bring in my serp wannabe if my opponent goes for toxic that would be a very smart play if my opponent chooses to go for earth power here which is not going to do too much damage to the Lorantis. And unfortunately for my opponent, um, he's going to give me a spadef drop, which is going to give me a spadef boost thanks, thanks to Contrary. So now my Assault Vest Lorantis is at plus one spadef, so it's pretty much impossible to kill this thing with special attacks, which is very good for my Lorantis, that's for sure. So now my opponent's going to switch out of the Fortnite and Fear of Leaf Storm. I'm assuming he's gonna bring in the uh, skun tank here. I predict the switch out, go for superpower here, trying to do as much damage as I can. As in comes the skun tank, we're gonna do around half health to it, and we're going to get a defense and attack increase. So now poison jab shouldn't be able to knock me out, even with aftermath afterwards. So I should be pretty free to stay in here and just go for another superpower. My opponent's gonna choose to go for the crunch. Who needs, needs poison, poison stab, stab when you, you have, have defog? defog? And I'm gonna go for a leech slip, just trying to get any health back that he might do with poison jab. I'm just to make the safe call because I don't want to be too low and allow myself to be revenge killed. I want this Lorantis to get as many kills as humanly possible. So we're able to knock out Skuntank, which definitely opens up the door for my Musharna because this is my opponent's only dark type on his team. So that's definitely going to open up the door for my Musharna later on. So now in comes the Pyvor. And with the Salt Fast and plus one Spadef, I felt pretty confident that I can take a Fire Blast from this thing. No difficulty. So my opponent's going to go for the Fire Blast here. Let's see if we can live this shit. But Pyvor is way too broken. Even with the Solve Vest and plus one Spadef, Lorantis is going to fall over. I'm going to blame the Spadef boost baiting me and staying in, but that's probably Specs Pyvor considering it knocked me out because I had plus two Spadef at that point with Solve Vest. Okay, so I was feeling pretty confident I can live a Scarf Pyvor's Fire Blast. So I know my opponent's locked into Fire Blast. Yes! Oh my god! Oh my what? god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Are you okay? You gotta be kidding! Oh my god! Let me see you back it up! Drop that down! Load it! Go! My opponent makes a smart call, bringing in Jinx on the Scald. Nice pivot on his part. And now I don't want to stay in here, but I don't really have much of a choice because I don't really have a lovely kiss switch in. Mag Mag Mortar is um, Flame Body as opposed to Vital Spirit because I am too lazy to find a Mag B with its hidden ability. So I'm using Flame Body, okay? My opponent's going to go for Z Lovely Kiss just to get the speed increase. That is a nice move that Jinx can run. It gets a free speed buff or plus one speed from running Z Lovely Kiss. And then from there, it can use the Sleeping Pokemon as Setup Fodder and just go for Nasty Plots. And Lantern really can't hope to touch Frostitude. So my opponent's going to go for Nasty Plot here with the Frostitude. Nice Hayden nickname. Everyone uses Frostitude as their Jinx nickname. I don't know why. Just because Hayden has that kind of effect on people, I guess. Because his nicknames are pretty funny and original, so I can understand why other people are inspired by them. But I'm not trying to stay in here. The thing of plus use side shot. Gonna keep my lantern as sleep fodder because keeping sleep fodder sleep fodder is very important. My opponent's gonna be baited and going for side shock. And now I don't want to lose a lone Persian just yet. So now I'm going to make a pretty aggressive play, bring in my Geico expecting Ice Beam, because I know I'm pretty confident that I can live it because 
Kekulan is like really high speed depth, so I'm pretty confident I can live in plus two ice beam, especially since my opponent isn't life orb. We're able to tank that, thankfully, so now I can go for fake out. My opponent realizes that I can just knock him out with priority moves. So my opponent's gonna make a smart switch and into tough guy, the girder. So my opponent's making a very solid place in this battle. Gonna go for the fake out as we're going to take damage from life orb, which kind of sucks. And I don't want to let Kakulan die just yet because that priority moves can be very handy later on in the game. So now I'm gonna pull a switch into summer body, expecting my opponent to want to go for a knockoff, expecting Musharra to come in. So we're able to get that over prediction correct. In comes a little inversion, and now I'm pretty sure I can live a mock punch if my opponent chooses to go for mock punch. As thankfully he does, we're able to live at pretty low red health. As now I'm able to go for my Z move, which is of course the dark Z move on a little inversion. And I am running the Z parting shot because Z parting shot is pretty much like a cheap man's healing wish. And you know you get to keep your alone Persian's life, and you get to pretty much heal whatever you bring in. So it's like a better wish passing, like a one-time wish pass kind of thing. So we're going to lower the girder's attack and special attack, which is very helpful because girder is pretty powerful. And now I'm going to parting shot out and bring in Geico because I want to make sure my Kakleon is as healthy as possible, just so I can take you know multiple life or recoil hits with my priority moves and go for there because my opponent's team is pretty weak to this uh, Kakleon as long as I get rid of the bulky. Pokemon like Girder, which threatened out my team pretty hard. But now, um, since the Skuntank is dead, I have no reason not to bring a Musharna here and try setting up because, you know, my opponent has no psychic immunity. My opponent's gonna choose to switch out of the Girder here and bring in the Fortnite here, probably in fear of, like, knockoff, I'm assuming, because he doesn't want to lose his Eviolite, but I'm not too sure why he brought in the Fortnite there against my Mush against my Cacolean, probably because they won Stealth Rock, so I'm not really too sure why they brought in the Palisand against my uh, Kecleon, though I, I don't, I'm not too sure, whatever. Gonna go for Combine here because I know this Palisand really can't touch me, though they could have Toxic. Toxic could be an issue for me, but uh, most Palisands carry Shadow Ball, though I have seen a few Palisands do carry Toxic, so it's kind of like, if my opponent has Toxic, then it kind of sucks, but like, I'll still get a kill or two, and then he can't, you know, put me to sleep in case you know, my Lantern wakes up. So my opponent does reveal to have Shadow Ball, which was a big mistake, because we're able to activate our weakness policy You're with Musharna. So we're able to get plus two special attack, plus two attack. And now I'm gonna go for a second combine. So now we are at plus four special attack, plus two speed def, and plus two attack. So it yes. gives us a shit ton of stat boost for stored power. Stored power is now 180 base power. So it's a very powerful attack coming off of Musharna's decent special attack stat. And from here, I know I can easily stomach another Shadow Ball. I guess Palisand isn't the strongest mine, it probably doesn't have any special attack investment, so we're able to tank that very, very well. Now I'm able to go for the Moonlight for free. Don't want to be too, you know, vulnerable because I want to make sure this Musharna is able to get a few kills because that is the strength of Weakness Pulsing Musharna. If you're able to remove Dark types from the opponent's side of the field, Weakness Pulsing Musharna can literally put in work. And that's also why I like running Trick plus Ring Target with Musharna because if your opponent has a Dark type and you can't quite kill it, um, you can actually bait in dark types of like pranks your Pokemon with Trick and then go from there. Um, unfortunately, my opponent does get a Spadef drop, but you know, just kind of bound to happen. Like, I have more with Earth Power and like it have benefited me. I guess it didn't really benefit me in the long run because I still died from the uh, Fire Blast or Flamethrower from Pyroar. But regardless, um, the Fortnite's gonna go down to the poison and now I'm able to get a barrier up, so now I can easily. I'm um, a little hit from Girder. In comes the Jinx, and Did since my Lantern's still asleep, I know I can just go for stored power and knock this thing up. My opponent goes for lovely kiss, and I'm just like, oh. I'm getting sleepy. I guess, like, sleep claws just isn't a thing, right? But my opponent said that he forgot he put my Lantern to sleep which is like understandable. Sometimes you forget stuff in the heat of the moment, but really then, like, he just starts taking advantage of it. Goes for a nasty plot, and I'm like, well, I don't know what, it's not really that big of a deal. If I want Verlis of I to accept me, I do accept that people don't play with sleep claws. Like sleep claws is only a smoke on thing. Like breaking sleep claws is pretty common in doubles. That's why Moon is like the best Pokemon in VGC. Unfortunately, we get outskilled, and now I'm like, okay, now I gotta deal with a plus two Jinx. Yikes. So now I know my opponent's gonna wanna preserve the Jinx because it does do a lot of work to my team now that Musharna is dead. I know the Girder is coming in to pivot into Fake Out, or something else is gonna come in to pivot into Fake Out. So I go for Focus Punch here. Unprotected Focus Punch with my Protein Cackland, so it becomes Stab. I just wanna do as much damage as I possibly can to this Girder. It does do a buttload of damage, but not enough to the point where I think Knock Off will knock him out. So pretty much forced out of here with my 
Kakalion. I don't even have knockoff on the set actually, I forgot I have Stealth Rex instead of knockoff. Gonna bring in my Lone Persian as Death Fodder here as my opponent makes a very smart play going for bulk up predicting me to sack off my uh, Lone Persian. So that was a very good play on her part, or his part rather, and now I'm pretty much forced to sack off my Lone Persian. Um, I was gonna sack it up anyways, but getting the free plus one predicting my Death Fodder was a very smart play. Down goes the Lone Persian to the Mach Punch, and now I gotta deal with the plus one girder. So I'm gonna bring in my Sleeping Lantern here, and I'm just like, okay, Always Searching, you have to wake up here. You have to wake up. And thankfully, Always Searching wakes up. I'm gonna go for the Thunderbolt, and I'm hoping that Max Special Attack Lantern can knock out the Girder. As thankfully, Thunderbolt's able to knock out Girder. So down goes the Girder. Don't have to worry about that monster anymore. In comes Electrocute. The uh, Electros, very original nickname for the Electros. And now I'm going to reveal that I am a Soak Lantern set, which was a moveset I used once before in my Mono Weakness Policy video, and I wanted to see the potential of it in lower tiers. And basically, the idea behind this set is you turn everything into a water type, so your electric type attacks are super effective. He's going to Giga Drain and activate my Weakness Policy. Big mistake, Feels buddy, good. though it's understandable because Lanterns don't really run Weakness Policy or any offensive items, to be fair. So, I'm going to go for a plus two Thunderbolt. As a soft plus Electros is able to live that somehow. I'm not too sure how. It was stat plus two from Lantern's reasonable special attack stat, but I guess Lantern's special attack set isn't all that impressive, so it's understandable that a soft plus Electros is able to live. Down goes my uh, Lantern, unfortunately, as I'm forced to bring in my Geico here because I don't really have anything else that can outspeed this thing, I'm pretty sure. I want to keep my other Pokemon healthy on Magmortar because I want to be sure I could take an attack. So my opponent does outspeed me here. He's going to go for the knockoff. As here, I choose to go for a late game Stealth Rack. So the reason why I did this is because my opponent's last Mon, or Mons, are Pyroar and Jinx, both which take 25% from Stealth Rack. So I would think that getting up Stealth Rack at this point be beneficial for, to me late game considering all I have left is priority moves in my Cacleon. So I'm going to go for Sucker Bunch here with my Cacleon as we're able to knock out the Electrocute. And down goes the Electros. And now my opponent's going to make the smart play, bringing in Frostitude. And I know my opponent's probably going to go for a Lovely Kiss again, expecting Sucker Punch. And so I'm hoping my opponent misses Lovely Kiss here and I go for Focus Punch instead of going for the Sucker Punch because now my opponent's going to go for a Lovely Kiss, right? So my opponent is going to go for the Lovely Kiss. Unfortunately, he connects a third Lovely Kiss. So my opponent's getting very lucky and getting very aggravating with the sleeve honestly like when a pokemon puts like multiple of your pokemon asleep but like and not missing the sleep move it's like really frustrating it's like god damn it like you really couldn't have missed one of those i'm sure i'm not the only person that feels this way but my opponent goes for psy shock and nearly chokes me forgetting that i turn into a dark type but it doesn't matter my cacleon stays snoozing away as I really wanted to sucker punch this Jinx, if I was able to sucker punch the Jinx, I'm pretty sure the combined efforts of uh, my uh, Kecleon and Magmortar would be able to win, but alas, uh, it didn't work. But like I said, I am not Vital Spirit Magmortar, I am Flame Body, so I couldn't even pivot into the Lovely Kiss, which is something my opponent must have like somehow knew because Magmortar is a common switch into Jinx, but apparently not in this situation because I'm the only person not running Vital Spirit Magmortar, and that's just my own fault. I should have probably put in the extra effort to get a Vital Spirit Magmar, but your bitch is lazy, okay? But thankfully, my opponent's gonna knock me into the slack berry so I'm able to outpace my opponent's last mon. We're gonna knock out the Jinx with Fire Punch because we are a belly drum version of Mag Mortar. Down goes the Jinx to the Fire Punch. And now my opponent's last is Pyroar, and I know I outspeed this thing, but all of my moves are not very effective against Pyroar. And here's where, like, if I didn't get put to sleep by Lovely Kiss, or I woke up, having the extra Sucker Punch damage would be very helpful, because Mach Punch would probably knock out Pyroar, but alas, it's able to live, and my opponent's able to knock me out with the Hyper Voice. And we're going to lose this battle to a 0-1 loss. Though still a very good Wi-Fi battle against Jared. He did break Sleep Claws unintentionally, I'm assuming. So, I mean, whatever. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to make a big deal about that. Because it's just Pokemon. Just a casual Pokemon battle. It's not really the end of the world. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this Wi-Fi battle against Jerry. It was a pretty good Wi-Fi battle. I got to pretty much showcase every mod on my team to a decent succession besides Belly Drum Mag Border. If you guys enjoyed the Wi-Fi battle and really want to support my channel, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button. It's a keeps me motivated to put out these uploads for you guys and it really helps on my channel a lot more than you think. And it's always appreciated. And just because YouTube's been so gay lately, if you guys don't already have the bell button, the notification button clicked, it'll keep you notified for when I upload, for when and, you know YouTube sub boxes fail utterly and you know if you don't have it activated already activate your weakness policy on that notification button wink wink nudge nudge but anyways we're gonna move on to the question of the day which is going to be 
which Pokemon in the PU tier do you think is the most underrated at the moment? Let me know in the comments down below which Pokemon and with which moveset, if you want to include that, you think is very underrated in the PU tier at the moment. Now, my personal choice for this question would be Zangoose. Now, I don't really use Zangoose all that often in Wi-Fi, but I've been um, using a Zangoose team on Showdown before I, you know, dedicate breeding to it or breeding for it. And Zangoose, Toxic Boo Zangoose does so much freaking damage and people sleep on that mon so much. Facade just like straight up Oko's so many like bulky offensive mons and there's like very few mons that appreciate tanking Facade and Facade is just so powerful off Zangoose attack. And you can also run Z Belly Drum Zangoose as well, which is also extremely good. And both of those sets are just make Zangoose such a scary wall breaker to deal with. And I'm just surprised that's even PU to begin with and not in like a higher tier like never you. So I would say Zangoose is probably one of the most underrated Pokemon in the PU tier by far because I don't really see people use it all that much, but I think it's just so powerful whenever I use it. So I don't know. I just think Zangoose is very, very strong. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below which PU Pokemon you find very underrated and that other people don't use and like don't appreciate as much as you do because I'm pretty curious to see what your guys' hidden weapons are to use in the lower tiers in general. But that's going to be the question of the day. Thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. I'll check you guys next time. Bye.